Have you ever felt? Okay, this is a gnarly, gnarly hook. Look at that point. Um, this is a TMCO 2499 SPBL in size 6. And this is a cool, gritty bead. Anyway, we're going to tie a Jumbo John. It's a it's a pretty cool pattern that, that you've seen um, in various different places. And uh, you can do it in all different colors. Uh, we're just going to do like your standard copperish color today. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to kind of seat this bead on the hook. So I've just got some 015 lead-free wire. And I'll make a whole bunch of wraps. I don't even know how many. Wrap it about up to the bead. And then when I get up here, because they're that uh, the hole in the bead's quite a bit bigger than the diameter of this wire, I'm just going to kind of bring it back over the top of itself and start wrapping backward um, just to about right there. And that will help me taper that. If I just wiggle that, it will break right off. And there I've got a really nicely tapered lead situation going on. Then I'll just grab that with my finger and pinch off or wiggle off the, the other section. So once I have this, I'll just push this all the way forward. Okay, so I'm going to tie in some tails, and this is a very aggressively curved shank hook, so I'm going to take my fly and I'm going to put it down like this in the vise. And I'll start out with some rusty brown uh, UTC 70 denier thread. And I can just lightly go up over this wire so it kind of stays put. And I'm going to wrap down quite a ways on the shank because that there's plenty of hook point to keep a fish pinned if I go down to about right there-ish. Now some of these are tied with biot tails. We're not going to do a biot tail. We're going to do actually a uh, silly leg tail or a flutter leg tail. This is just a brown. I guess I'm going to tie in up here so I'll just go back up. So I want to trap this on the far side of the hook and then pull this tight and as I wrap this I'll be able to wrap it on that far side of the hook all the way down so it's kicking off to one side of the hook. And then go back up. We're going to need to build up a body on this anyway so we'll just go back up. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So that's just kind of a cool little technique that you can use on all different types of bugs that have split tails like that. So you can see they're, they're coming off either side and I'll just trim those and this is meant to be a pretty long straggly pattern so I'm going to leave those fairly long. The next part is to tie in our copper wire. So I'm going to take a fairly long piece, how long is that, I don't know, 8 inches or so worth of wire and this is brassy sized. For this size of fly you could also use the the medium and I'm going to take a piece of copper and a piece of amber and actually one of these pieces of wire is brassy sized and one is medium sized so it'll kind of be a cool cool effect so I'm going to take those pieces of wire and just stick them in right here at the tie-in point for the legs I'll keep them right on top and wrap those down keeping them together and it's really critical that you you tie in nice and snug back here because you're going to put a lot of pressure on that wire as you start wrapping it forward. Okay now with a 70 denier thread my goal is to make this body completely smooth so that when I wrap these wires up there's no gaps. So. It would take me a long time with just 70 deniers, so I'm going to take this and on a Renzetti you can just kind of lay it behind this knob right here and let it sit. But before I do that I'm going to adjust my hook up to where it's supposed to be. 
So I'll just let that thread sit there and I'm going to grab a similar color thread in 210 denier. This happens to be just brown. And I'll start that up here. You don't even need to take your other thread off. And this will build up way faster. Three times faster. My math is right. And I want to continually spin my bobbin so that my thread is flat. You can see that it's starting to twist up so I'm just going to spin it counterclockwise and it will flatten out nicely. See the shine on that? And right here where I'm wrapping is right where that wire ends so I want to make sure to get that nice and smooth. Okay, so once I have that body built up for the most part, I'll just throw some half hitches in this. I don't need a, a nice whip finish because I'm going to just cover it all up with more thread. So now I take my 70 denier again and make sure it is also flat. And maybe put one last smooth layer of thread over it. Okay, so that's what the base of a Jumbo John or Copper John should be. Um, if you need to, you can take like a smooth piece of metal and kind of smooth out any rough edges, but you shouldn't need to do that. Okay, so now I'm ready to wrap the wire. I'm just going to take both pieces of wire, make sure they both stay together. See how they want to separate right there? So this is the trickiest wrap. Okay, and because I'm using two different colors of wire, this wants to give me trouble, but I should be good. They're two different sizes of wire. All right, so now I should I should be able to wrap it up. And even if I have a little gap right there, I can come in here with my like a little tool and straighten them out even though I kind of scratched it it's all good so just make sure you you keep lots of tension on your wire and wrapping a curved shank like this with wire right up about here you get some pretty extreme angles going on so just make sure that your wire doesn't separate or try to wrap over the top of itself Okay, so that's a nice Jumbo John style body. And I'm just going to continue wrapping that forward even though this is where the thorax is going to be. We'll go about to there and tie those off. Okay, so the wing case on this fly is going to be both flash and thin skin. So I've cut a piece of thin skin roughly the same width as the bead. And then I'm using some brown holographic tinsel in size large. So if the tinsel is going to be on top, we got to tie that in first. So I'm going to take my thread and wrap it back. Uh, these kind of have a a bigger thorax. So I'm going to wrap it back about right there ish. So my tinsel's tied in, now I'll just tie the thin skin right on top of it. I'll tie this in shiny side down so that it's shiny side up when I pull it over the top. So just like that. Now, um, tying in rubber legs into a thorax is kind of tricky. 
And some people will tie them in right now and then try to dub around the legs, but that's a huge pain. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay, so I've got some Arizona synthetic dubbing in peacock color. And the, the mega synthetic is a little bit easier to dub, but I'm just going to dub up a bunch and create kind of the underthorax. So I've got a quite a bit of dubbing on there. That looks about right. And I have a little bit of space behind the bead that you can't really see now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my thread back to right in the middle of that dubbing and I'm going to create a band of thread. You can barely see that thread. And I'll take another one of these silly legs or flutter legs and I'm going to loop it and just tie those in right on top and then take one and pull it to each side and then I'll kind of give that a little bit of a cinch down. And from here, all I'm going to do is dub over the top of this thread and then a little bit of dubbing toward the bead and then we'll have a fully dubbed thorax. Okay, so you see I cover up that thread, pull these legs back, and then wrap up to the bead. And then I'll trim these legs. You can see that's a nice angle for those legs to come out. Now I'll pull this um, thin skin over first. So once the thin skin is pulled over, I like to come in here and trim it first. To get in here behind the bead, I really like these TMCO fine tip scissors. Uh, I don't know what they're actually called, but they're, they're, they're more economical scissors, but they have really fine tips. So I'm just going to kind of pull up the edge and start on one side and work my way over. You can see that gets really, really close. And from here now, I'll pull over the flash and tie it down as well. And with the flash, I can kind of wiggle it back and forth to make sure it's centered. And then before I trim that, I actually pull that flash back and go over it with more thread. So you can see that, that tie-in's maybe a little bit messy, but that's fine because we'll hit it with some UV resin. So we'll whip finish that. We'll trim the legs to length. We want these legs to be pretty long. So I just pushed them all forward and trimmed them at the same time. Maybe a little bit shorter than that. That's good. So you can see that's a, a very long profile. And then I'm going to take some resin. So I'm going to use UV thick. And the reason I like the thick for this is because it, you can build up a nice bubble. All right, so we've got a nice casing on that. Now we'll hit it with the Infinite light. And then we'll finish that off with just a very thin layer of flow. Once we have that set, we'll just cure that.
Okay, and the final step to this that I like to do is just get a, a dubbing teaser. This is the Tiemco one. I really like it because you can just get in real tight and pick out little bits at a time. So we'll just tease that dubbing out just a little bit to make it a little bit more buggy. So anyway, that's a Jumbo John. It's a very good pattern uh, if you like check nymphing or if you want a real heavy fly to anchor stuff down. And that's it. Nymph it, fish it, and catch some fish. Thank you.